David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I wanted to share with you my latest pen purchase, which is a somewhat new version of a pen that happened to be the subject of the third video I ever posted here on YouTube back in late 2015. And it's the pen that really kicked me off on my pen journey. The pen is from Twisby, it is their Diamond 580, and the specific model I will be showing you today is the Iris. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this great starter pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. I've recounted this tale several times, but the abridged version is that I started in this hobby by picking up a Lamy All-Star. Uh, then I picked up a couple of other entry-level pens like the Pilot Metro and the Parker Urban. Uh, but then I thought it might be fun to pick up something else. I scoured all of the reviews and top 10 lists I could find and finally settled on a Twisby Diamond 580. Um, at the time, I believe it sold for $50, and the idea of spending $50 on a pen was mind-boggling. I mean, who on earth spends $50 on a pen? That's just outrageous. I had little idea what I was getting myself into. But once I received the pen, which is this one right here, something clicked. Um, I instantly loved it and thought to myself, if this pen is so cool, then what other cool pens are out there that I don't know about? Um, that is a very dangerous question to be asking yourself when it comes to this hobby. Um, I mentioned this, but this pen was the subject of the third video I ever posted here on YouTube. The look and feel of my reviews has certainly changed over the last seven and a half years. Um, over the years, I hadn't taken the greatest care of this pen. Um, I will mainly chalk that up to inexperience. I kept it inked up for several years without cleaning it, which has resulted in a few areas with some staining. Totally my fault. Uh, this is still a great pen and completely usable, uh, but it just has a bit of a used look to it. I thought it might be time to pick up a new one and decided to pick up the Iris model. Plus, I thought it might be interesting to revisit one of my very first reviews, especially since it was a pen that was so influential in launching me down the rabbit hole of this hobby. Um, the pen arrives in this box. Um, I always thought that Twisby had some cool and unique packaging. Uh, the lid lifts off, and then inside here, the pen sits a little prisoner in the pen stocks or pillories. Uh, vocabulary lesson, uh, there is a different bet difference between stocks and pillories. Um, the items used for punishment where your hands and head uh, or maybe even feet were clamped in slats of wood and you were like put on display in the town square for everyone to see. Um, a pillory is the version where only your head and hands were restrained and the stocks are the version where only your feet are restrained. Uh, they're essentially the same thing, with the difference being the uh, body part being restrained. Okay, that's enough of fig boot on vocabulary, back to a pen. Now, I like that these just kind of come off. And then there's something interesting about this packaging, uh, something that really isn't evident. Uh, you pull off the back here, and then underneath there's a couple of things. Um, there's a bit of silicone gel, and then there's a helpful wrench that you could use to disassemble the piston mechanism of this pen. Um, it's a really helpful tool because it could also potentially be used on other uh, piston filling systems from other pens as well. Um, it's uh, one of the great things about most Twisby pens uh, is that they can be completely disassembled for ease of cleaning. Um, but there's nothing on the back here that tells you to look under the, uh, the top here. Uh, and uh, that this has been in their packaging for quite some time. So I knew it was there, but if you're new to this hobby or the brand, you might not know that you need to take it off. So uh, maybe it'd be helpful to include something on the back here telling you to look further inside. But this is the Twisby Diamond 580 model. Um, this is the Iris. Um, all of the uh, Diamond 580 models are clear demonstrators with the differentiator between uh, being the trim colors and accents and some are called the AL model which have uh, an aluminum section on it. Uh, this Iris model has a really nice rainbow treatment on several parts. I'll give you a close-up look here in just a bit. 
Uh, Twisby is a Taiwanese company. Uh, the name Twisby, uh, T-W-S-B-I, stands for the phrase uh, Hall of Three Cultures or Sang Wong Tang uh, in Mandarin. Uh, Sangwen Tong also can represent uh, the Hall of Three Rare Treasures, which is a room in the Forbidden City in Beijing, which houses some uh, precious calligraphy masterpieces. Um, I visited the Forbidden City a couple of times, and during my last visit, I wanted to visit the namesake room located in the Hall of Mental Cultivation. Uh, the Forbidden City is enormous, literally thousands of buildings. Uh, it was an extremely hot day, and much to the displeasure of my family who was with me, uh, it took forever for me to locate the room. Um, I was really excited when I finally found it on a sign, only to be met with a second sign saying that the hall had been closed for renovation since 2015. So I took a picture of my Twisby I brought with me uh, in front of the offending sign. While I wasn't able to visit the room, I was able to visit this restroom, which apparently is rated four stars by the Beijing Tourism Administration. Uh, then here's a picture of me at the Great Wall. Uh, my hand is over my pocket because while this pen was in my pocket, uh, the cap ha happened to come off and it stained my shorts. So I'm covering up the stain. Uh, it wasn't the pen's fault that the cap came off. It was just one of those things. I did post a two-part video series detailing my uh, last trip to China. If you would care to check that out, I'll put links to them in the notes below. Uh, there's not much fountain pen content in them. They're more uh, travel vlogs. Okay, let's take a look at this pen. The top of the cap has one of Twisby's logos that I always thought looked really cool. Uh, the finial is the first place that you can see some of the rainbow treatment. Uh, this transitions into the clip, which I feel fits the general aesthetics of this pen well, and is adequately functional in materials of varying thicknesses. The cap angles up slightly. Uh, inside the cap, there is a translucent inner cap to help prevent the nib from drying out. I really like that you can get a decent look at the nib in there as well. Uh, then we have the cap band. On one side, it's laser engraved with the name of the company. Then on the other side, it has the name of the pen as well as Taiwan, where these pens are manufactured. Uh, there is a medium sized step down to the transparent faceted barrel. The faceting here on the barrel is intriguing. Uh, between it being transparent and the way that the light refracts off of it, it's uh, challenging, at least for me, to really make out the exact patterning and shape of the facets. Uh, maybe it's just that my eyes are getting a bit old, but it provides a unique and intriguing visual element to this pen. You can see the piston in there, and the large ink chamber looks fantastic when you have some ink sloshing around in there. Uh, at the end of the barrel, there is another rainbow-treated band and the piston knob. The knob is adorned with these vertical lines, and the very end is slightly rounded. The cap twists off with just over one full rotation, and underneath we have this colorful number six stainless steel nib. Um, I like the rainbow treatment on this nib and how it is only on the upper portion of the nib. It's one of those things where it would have been easy to just rainbow the entire nib, but a bit more difficult to only do it to a portion of it. Uh, this nib is available in either extra fine, fine, medium, broad, as well as a 1.1 stub. The section begins with a raised metal band, again with the rainbow treatment. Um, I like how the treatment continues on the metal portion of the end, which extends into the section. Uh, the section angles up until you reach the resin threads, which transition into an external O-ring and the remainder of the barrel. Um, the Diamond 580 is a rather long pen. It is plenty long enough to use unposted. Uh, the cap does post, but it doesn't post very deeply. Um, the posting is also problematic because the cap affixes to the piston knob. If you should happen to accidentally twist the cap a bit, then some ink could be expelled, which would not be a good thing. Um, also, since it doesn't post very deeply, there's a little gap here uh, in basically at the end of the knob, which in my opinion isn't very visually attractive. Um, while I don't feel that posting the cap significantly backweights the pen, it does add an inordinate amount of length to it, making it rather unwieldy. So I prefer to use this pen unposted.
Uh, and as I've alluded many times, uh, this is a piston filler. The mechanism is really smooth and the chamber is generous. Um, this is one of my favorite clear demonstrator pens in regard to the overall look. Uh, this pen, in my opinion, has a very high cool factor. The Twisby Diamond 580 is available from a wide variety of retailers, even with this Iris model, and sells for $80. The Iris model does. Uh, this one is a, a bit of a premium compared to the price of the standard 580 models, which is around $65. For this pen, I feel the rainbow treatment is done very nicely and warrants the additional cost. Um, even at the $80 price point, I find this pen to be reasonably priced. Uh, for the standard model, you would be hard-pressed to find a better overall pen in the $65 range. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Twisby Diamond 580 Iris. Wanted to give you another close-up look at that. And then also I have inked this up with one of my favorite inks, which I'll tell you in a minute, but as you can see, it's green. Uh, but uh, this is a great pen for seeing ink sloshing about. Um, in regard to size comparisons, this is exactly what it looks like with the standard Twisby Diamond 580. You can see it's exactly the same. This is what it looks like with the VAC 700, and this is the Iris version of the VAC 700. Uh, and then this is the Twisby Go. And in regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Twisby Eco and a Lamy All Star. And then finally, here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. In regard to uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the VAX 700 and the Lamy All-Star, and then here it is with the Eco. So here we go with the writing sample for the Twisby Diamond. 580, and this is the Iris. This is a medium stainless steel nib, and the ink is one of my favorite greens, which is, we'll say, we'll say what the brand is first, Diamine. Apple Glory. This is what the ink looks like. It's just a right, nice solid green that really just kind of pops. Um, this is what it looks like with Seitz Kreuznach Lime Green. Uh, and then here it is with Papier Plume Snowball Spearmint. This is what the Diamine bottles look like. This is their older label, but they're nice and large, nice large neck, uh, and the ink is of really great quality as well. Here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I find the nib to be fairly smooth with just a hint of feedback to it. With this stainless steel nib, you're not going to get a lot of line variation in here. Um, I'd say that the ink flow is on the medium size for this medium nib in regard to some reverse writing. It's a little sharp. And then in regard to some fast writing... The feed keeps up well. So there you have the Twisby Diamond 580 Iris. Uh, this is a great starter pen. Uh, if you want to go for the no frills version for that $65 version, like I said before, it's hard to beat a pen at that price point. Uh, and for just a little bit more to have a little bit more pizzazz, uh, then this model is fairly priced as well. And it's one of my favorite uh, beginning pens uh, and one that I'll probably use a little bit more often now that I've kind of upgraded the model that I have. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.